I'm Mrs. Buchanan, and I am a third grade teacher at Fountain City Elementary. Hello, Pep Cats. I miss you. No matter what Knox County School you go to, I want to welcome you for coming and joining me today. I'm really happy that you chose to learn with me, and I think we're going to have a great time reading together. Let's get to it. So today we are going to be reading, talking, and we will work towards some tasks that will allow us to be writing in response to what we read today. Now reading, talking, and writing are three keys to helping us become stronger, more fluent readers. Before we dig into our text today, I have a few helpful tips for you if you are having any trouble understanding this video. If you're watching along on your TV today, you can turn on closed captions if they're available. Ask an adult to help you if you aren't sure how. Another strategy to help you is to adjust the playback speed of the video. This means slowing the video down as you watch. You can also use the pause feature at any time if you're watching on YouTube you may also be able to pause on your TV. Now this could help you if you need a little more time to finish reading part of a text, or if you just need a moment to let your brain catch up. It can also be helpful to pause and then rewind and watch a chunk over again if you need to. And my last tip is to watch the video with someone else at home. This can help you better understand because you can pause often and talk to your partner about what you heard, what you understood, and also anything you aren't sure about. I want you to take a look at this picture. Reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. Hmm, well we know how important exercise is for our bodies. What happens to your muscles when you exercise? That's right, they get stronger. Well, reading does the exact same thing for your mind or your brain. It makes it stronger. And that's why I'm so excited that you chose to focus on reading with me today. Because even though we aren't in our normal classrooms right now, our brains still need to read so they can keep getting stronger. Now, you might have already read the text that we are about to read today, or you might not have. If you have read it before, that's okay. Rereading the same text more than once is actually great for your reading brain. Each time we read a text, we are always noticing and learning something new. Now, if you haven't read the text yet, no worries. We are all going to set the same goal to read this text several times this week, no matter what. This will help us become more fluent readers. Well, I really need your help again. We have another mystery to solve. Can you believe that? Remember, if you solve a mystery, you could be called a detective. Another word for detective is sleuth. And if you've joined me in previous weeks, you might remember that a sleuth can also mean a bloodhound or a special kind of dog that tracks clues. Since we will need to track clues in our text, we will be like those dogs in order to solve our mysteries today. Because of that, I will call you a sleuth hound which is a made up compound word. Okay, sleuth hound? I think you'll do a great job hunting for clues as we read. Here we go. First, I'd like to share a letter written to you, the sleuth hound. If you've joined me before, you've read it before, but remember, rereading is great for your reading brain, right? So no matter what, let's make sure we read it together now. Here we go. Dear Junior Sleuth Hound, Mysteries are all around. There could be a mystery on your playground. There could be a mystery in a faraway land. There could be mysteries between the pages of this book. So, what do you do to solve a mystery? 
become a sleuth hound. Look for clues, ask interesting questions, then put all the pieces together and prove your answers. This book gives you a chance to practice skills that sleuths use. As you read this book, use the super sleuth steps to find answers to some really big questions. Good luck. So now we know that our goal is to read closely today and to look for important clues as we read. This will help us understand what we read and solve some big reading mysteries. Look at the picture clues next to the letter we just read. What do you see? Do you see the camera, flashlight, compass, and keys? Those could certainly be helpful tools for a detective to use. Okay, we've got one more important thing to pay attention to before we read closely as sleuth hounds. Being a super sleuth involves several steps. Take a look at the steps with me. You might notice the steps are divided into four highlighted parts. Look for clues, ask questions, make your case, and prove it. Look for clues. Hmm. We were just talking about being detect detectives as we read, right? Well, where will we find our clues? That's right. Good readers always refer to the text, which means they find their clues right in the text. Next, we see ask questions. Remember, asking questions as you read will help you to focus more closely on the text and to be able to understand it better. The third step said, make your case. Well, remember, we aren't making a suitcase today. Case is a multi-meaning word. Remember, for a sleuth hound, making a case means that you will use the important clues that you found in the text to tell what you think or to make a statement. Whenever we write in response to a text, that's a really good example of making a case. The last step says, prove it. That means that while we are working on making our case, we must use details from the text to show or to prove what we have learned. And of course, we have some fun tasks that will require you to use these super sleuth steps after we finish reading. I think you're going to love completing those tasks. On this page, under unit four, it says one of a kind. We've learned another word that means the same as one of a kind. What's that word? Right, the word is unique. Unique means unlike others or one of a kind. Let's read what the sleuth hound is saying to you in his dialogue bubble, where that arrow is pointing. Hi, sleuth hounds. In this unit, you will be looking for clues about how something is one of a kind. Here are some sleuth tips to help you. Be unique. Wow, so what kinds of clues will we find today? Yes, we will find clues about how something is unique or one of a kind. If you've joined me before, we've read text to find out how street games and Mount Waialeale are unique. I wonder what will be unique in the text we read today. Here we see our text. What's the title of the passage? Yes, rocks and more rocks. Hmm, well, maybe that gives us a clue about what this text will be about. What do you think? Right, it seems like the text will have to do with rocks, but I definitely need more information before I'm ready to make my case. I'm looking for picture clues. Do you see any? Sure, there are lots of rocks shown, and that definitely seems to support the title of this text, Rocks and More Rocks. 
it also supports our idea that the text will involve rocks in some way. Any other clues? Yes, I also see the boy looking at rocks with a magnifying glass. Perhaps this text will be about looking at rocks, or maybe it will be a narrative with a character that's a boy. Let's read the first few sentences together to see if we can find out more. Now I notice that this text seems to have many paragraphs at the beginning. Can you see why that might be? Right, I see quotation marks, which means characters are speaking. This is called dialogue. And remember, each time a character speaks, there is a new paragraph. Will you track along with me as I read the first four paragraphs where that bracket is? Great, let's read together now. Patrick, your room looks like a rock quarry, mom said as she stepped over a pile of rocks. I know, Patrick said, it's awesome. It's a neat collection, Patrick, but it's taking over your room. Maybe it's time to start weeding some out. I wouldn't know which ones to get rid of, Patrick complained. Hmm, all right, so what genre or type of text does it seem that this text is? Did you say this seems like the beginning of a narrative or a story? I agree. Which characters did we meet? Right, Patrick and his mom are the two characters talking to one another. What about the setting? Do we read anything about where this is taking place? Yes, mom is talking about Patrick's room. What is she saying about it? Right, mom says his room looks like a rock quarry. Hmm. I'm not really sure what rock quarry means. Do I have any clues in the text to help me? Look for some clues, sleuth hound. Did you notice that as mom was comparing his room to a rock quarry, she stepped over a pile of rocks? I noticed that too, and that may have helped you determine that a rock quarry is a place where lots of rocks are taken from the ground. So it's a place with lots of rocks. Here's a photo of a real rock quarry. Is it similar to what you visualize? Now we read that Patrick thinks this makes his room awesome. Does his mom agree? Take a look back in this portion of the text that we just read. No, his mom doesn't seem to agree because she says, the collection of rocks is taking over his room. Patrick must have a lot of rocks. Now, why could that be a problem? Right, this could cause Patrick's room to be very messy and cluttered. Now remember, we were supposed to be reading to find out how something is unique, right? That was our sleuth hound mission. Have we read about anything unique yet? Right, Patrick's collection is unique. Not many people have huge rock collections that take up lots of space in their rooms. Can you find the word weeding? There it is underlined in green, right? Weeding. Now, what clues help you know what weeding means? Good. Did you say some out and to get rid of? Those were clues that when we weed something out, we get rid of some things. And I bet this could help Patrick with his huge rock collection. 
Now, read the rest of this page to find out which new characters we meet and what takes place next. You can read out loud or silently to yourself, but I'll stay quiet while you read. Go ahead. Okay, we're going to start digging into this portion of text now, but remember, if you need more time and you're able to pause, you can pause and finish reading and then pick the video back up when you're ready. Which character do we meet in this portion of the text? Yes, we meet their neighbor, Mrs. Simpson. Then we read that mom tells Patrick to show Mrs. Simpson his rock collection. What is Mrs. Simpson's reaction when she sees the rocks? Yes, her eyes grew big. Does that mean that her eyes actually grew? They got bigger? No, what does that mean? Right. That means she was surprised by Patrick's collection. She opened her eyes widely when she saw his huge rock collection. How does that support the idea that his collection is unique? Yes, Mrs. Simpson is very surprised to see this large collection, which means she might not have seen so many rocks in a boy's rock collection before. Now, read the next four paragraphs where the bracket is to yourself with this purpose. Find out what else Mrs. Simpson tells Patrick about his collection. Go ahead and read now. Okay, what else did Mrs. Simpson tell Patrick about his collection? Good. She tells him that it would be a good idea to know which minerals can be found inside his rocks since minerals are the building blocks of rocks and minerals are what rocks are made of. Yeah, I think there's a science connection there. We've learned about that before. Now this tells us that Mrs. Simpson has some knowledge about rocks. Does Patrick have a lot of knowledge about rocks? Look for some clues to answer that. Did you notice that when Mrs. Simpson asked Patrick if he knew what kind of rocks he had, he said, no, they're just rocks. This might have helped you see that even though Patrick really likes rocks and he has a really big, unique collection, he doesn't know about the minerals that make up his rocks. So he doesn't know much about those rocks. Let's read the rest of the story together to find out if Patrick will learn more about his rocks 
and if he will decide to get rid of some of his collection. Patrick, come to the Nature Center. You can look through field guides to see what you have. Once you have learned more about the rocks, you may find some to get rid of. A good rock collector learns to be particular about his rocks. Wow, said Patrick. I didn't realize there was so much to collecting rocks. I'll see you at the Nature Center. Hmm. So we learn that Mrs. Simpson wants Patrick to come to the Nature Center. This must be a place where people can learn about nature. Why does she want him to go there? Yes, she says that if he learns more about his rocks, he might decide to get rid of some of them. She also tells Patrick that a good rock collector is particular or picky about which rocks he or she chooses to keep. Now, based on Mrs. Simpson's knowledge about rocks and her invitation to Patrick to come to the Nature Center, you might have inferred that she works at the Nature Center, and I agree. Can you think of a word that might describe the rocks in a really good collection? Maybe you said rare or special, or maybe you said unique. Yeah, Patrick could make his collection unique in a different way if he only keeps the most special rocks in his collection. Do you think getting rid of some of the rocks might make his mom happy? I think so too. Patrick could still keep a really unique collection, but his collection would not take over his room anymore. So is Patrick going to do it? Will he get rid of some of his rocks? Right! We learn that Patrick says he will go to the Nature Center, and this gives us a hint that he will take Mrs. Simpson's advice to get rid of some of his rocks that maybe aren't as special or unique. Wow, that was a really great story. Now that we've read it, let's take a look at the tasks for us in the sleuth work section. The first task says gather evidence. Did Patrick's mom support his desire to collect rocks? Write down evidence from the article. So we need to answer this question using evidence from the text. Patrick definitely desired or wanted to have a rock collection. Did Patrick's mom support or help him with this? We'll have to use text to answer that. The next task says, ask questions. Write two questions you might ask Mrs. Simpson about her job at the Nature Center. Okay, we agreed that Mrs. Simpson is very knowledgeable about rocks. So if you could ask her two questions about her job at the Nature Center, what would your questions be? You could maybe even think of more than two questions you might ask. And the last task says, make your case. Do you think rocks or coins would make a more interesting collection? Write a paragraph that supports your opinion. Use evidence from the story. Okay, so this is an opinion prompt. In your opinion, which kind of collection would be more interesting? Now in the text, we have evidence to support the idea of a rock collection, but not really a coin collection. Are you familiar with what a coin collection is? If you said no, don't worry. Here's a picture of a cover of a text that I know. It's called Coins and Other Currency a kid's guide to coin collecting. Now, if you want to, you can actually find the whole text right on your school's library media website. If you've accessed Epic before, this is exactly where you will go to find this text. But I want you to take a look at the photos of the coins on the cover. Some might look like coins you've seen before, and some might not. That's because coin collectors might collect coins from not just one country, like the United States, but from lots of other countries too. 
they might collect coins based on how old the coins are. Some old coins might be very rare or hard to find, so that can make a coin collection very unique. And coins can have interesting symbols or people depicted on them, so this can also be important to some coin collections. So now I want you to use what you read about rock collections in the text and this information about coin collections to form your opinion on which type of collection seems more interesting to you. Wow, I'm really proud of your hard work today. Let's look back and recap what we did. We learned what a sleuth was and how we could be reading sleuths. We read a text about Patrick's rock collection, how it was unique, and how he could make it unique in another way. We looked at some of the tasks and we are now ready to work on them. Now you can first complete those tasks, but of course I want to give you a fun challenge task to work on. Do you wanna hear about it? Tell about a collection. I want you to write about a collection that you have right now or one that you wish you had. Be really specific when you're writing. Write about and describe the items in the collection. Tell what makes this cute collection really unique or unlike any others. You can also draw pictures of the collection, or you can take some pictures of the collection if you're able to. When you finish, you could even share your work with someone. And then I have one more reminder for you. Don't forget to go back and reread the text. Remember, it will be great for your reading brain, and it will help you complete all of these tasks. Well, I had so much fun reading with you today. I really hope that you enjoyed giving your brain some exercise to keep it strong. This is Mrs. Buchanan saying goodbye and hoping you always remember how unique you are and how much your teachers and your friends miss you. Stay safe and keep learning. Bye-bye.